to an all-new episode of the Bitcoin News Show right here on the CryptoCast Network. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, so much for joining us. It's been a big, huge week. If you guys can't join us, uh, make sure to join us in the comments below, and hopefully we can have some conversation there. We got people in the live chat already ready to go, so uh, it should be a good show, guys. So we are screen sharing our YouTube channel, uh, website, CryptoCast.network, which has our links to our YouTube channel, Twitter, Instagram, and iTunes, RSS feeds, and all that good stuff. Uh, we, have, we just got a brand new, uh, fresh donation address, guys, so if you guys want to check that out, uh, that still has... Uh, zero Bitcoin on it. <laughs> so if you guys want to check out our brand new uh, address that can be found at CryptoCast.network. This is, of course, a community supported YouTube channel. So we very much appreciate all the donations and feedback that we get from you guys. So let's go ahead and stop the screen share and uh, get into your guys' quick bit section. We like to do a little uh, recap of the week's news before we go into the main topics. Uh, so let me just pull up the notes and we'll get to that. So uh, big, the first one, guys, is kind of big. This is this is the biggest one, I think. Uh, so we got Bitcoin crossing over three billion dollars in daily transaction and setting a 30 day volume, volume record, record at 770 billion. Uh, so that is that is absolutely huge, guys. Um, Bitcoin continues to grow and grow and grow. And if you guys have read Dan Held's articles, you would know that this is coming, guys. So uh, we got the next uh, the next one. Uh, yesterday we saw the 50th anniversary of the moon landing. So that was pretty cool, guys, for the Bitcoiners out there uh, paying attention. I thought uh, there was a lot of good memes out there that was going on, and I really thought that was interesting. So, but a bit of history, and of course, mixing a little bit with Bitcoin, with the uh, focus on the moon, of course. Uh, then we got uh, the world's first lightning conference, guys, has been announced. The very first lightning conference in the world has been announced uh, officially, and it will be taking place October 19th and 20th in Berlin, Germany. So, guys, make sure you can attend that if you can. I mean, it's it's a ways uh, away if you're in the States, but let me tell you, this is, again, this is like the world's first lightning conference. So, you know, I, you, talk, you hear the OGs talk about all the time, like Max Kaiser and Trace Mayer and, and such, how they were at that first Bitcoin uh, meetup, right? Uh, or that first uh, Bitcoin meetup and that first Bitcoin conference. Well, uh, you guys can now be at the first lightning conference. So make sure you check that out. Uh, I haven't decided if I'm going yet. I really would like to go, but we'll have to see. It is absolutely a little ways away. Uh, then we got BTC Pay Server. Guys, this is really awesome. They have launched a crowdfunding campaign for Tor uh, using their platform, and it absolutely exceeded uh, the actual limit, guys. I mean, we're talking, uh, it, There's, I think their their soft goal uh, was around uh, 10,000, and that, it just completely obliterated that. So make sure you guys check that out. Just, just a shining example, guys of the Bitcoin community, a shining example of the entrepreneurship and, and just the, the altruism and the philanthropy, just uh, the, the community itself proving uh, that we can uh, fund these amazing projects that we want to see happen in Bitcoin. And it just happens time and time again. This is just another great example, guys. And of course, BTC Pay uh, now becoming almost just just a, a huge part of the Bitcoin infrastructure overall worldwide now uh, because of the success of it and of course uh, it being open source. So make sure you guys check that out again. If you guys want to uh, you know, uh, bypass the services like BitPay and if you don't care about fiat and you just want to take crypto, then BitPay is absolutely the way to go. You can absolutely remain uh, sovereign with that, uh, especially when you connect it to your own full node. Uh, then we got Bitcoin deemed a virtual property uh, by Chinese court. So this is kind of interesting. Of course, the China FUD guys, they go back and forth on Bitcoin. It's been crazy. Uh, it's been legal, not legal and banned and not banned. Uh, but this is just another um, uh, milestone in that particular particular crazy story. Uh, it's pretty interesting to see their evolution as they uh, continue, of course, because more, more and more guys, they're just not going to be able to, to stop Bitcoin. They know they can't stop Bitcoin. So at some point, they're just going to have to uh, uh, cave in. Uh, then we got uh, Bitstamp. So uh, oh, no, wait, that's part of the main uh, topics. So I don't want to go with that yet. Uh, oh, yeah. Final, final, final one, guys. Uh, the Coinbase has ended their bundle program. I thought this was a, a bit of a milestone because we can see, of course, the alts just just falling away uh, when it comes to their value uh, in Bitcoin. And we can see this over and over again. The the, the uh, Bitcoin dominance now is rising. Uh, and we have the ending of things like, you know, uh, the PRISM program. Uh, what was that? The PRISM for, uh, Prism from... Um, uh, Shapeshift's company. Uh, we had that, that, that ended, they sunsetted that, and now Coinbase is sunsetting their bundle program. Just another sign of the times, guys, that's showing that you can't bundle and index cryptocurrencies with Bitcoin. That's not how it works. We don't index gold with a stock, right? That's just a completely different thing. So make sure you guys check that out. Uh, that was pretty interesting. And okay, I think that was it, guys. So let's get into, uh, let's get, let's get into the introductions because I have an awesome panel for you guys today. I'm super, super proud uh, to bring you these guys. These guys have done amazing things in the community. Uh, they bring amazing knowledge to the community. So I'm really proud to have them guys here. Let's first introduce them now. We got Mr. Matt O'Dell, the co-founder of FinalMessage.io and co-host of the Tales from the Crypt podcast. Matt, how you doing? How's it going, guys? Really happy to be here. It was great meeting you at Bitcoin 2019. 
Yeah, man. What's up, freaks? Uh, you guys had a great show there. Really, really great live show. If you guys missed that, that was at the Bitcoin 2019 conference. They're doing another conference next year, Bitcoin 2020. Make sure you check that out. Hopefully you guys will do another live show because uh, I know I really enjoyed that. I think that the audience enjoyed that too, man. I think this is your first time on the show, Matt. Yes, it is. Yes, oh, it is. Yeah, that's crazy. So we got to get you on here more often. <laughs> yeah, long time <laughs> listener, but but glad to actually be here. Yeah, man. Thanks. Really appreciate you coming on, man. Uh, then, of course, you guys, we got Max Hillebrand, content creator of the WCN. Let's see if he is, his connection is working right now. Max, are you there? Well, my, my connection, uh, or rather, the, my OPSEC is too good. Uh, I'm, I'm running cubes on my, on my purism laptop because uh, open source everything. And that is fantastic, uh, but the thing is that I have to connect like five different virtual machines before the microphone ever gets registered, <laughs> which is fantastic, right? It's the way it should be. But damn, is it a pain in the ass if you're a content creator. Oh, man. So well, I'm so glad that you made it, Max. Uh, thanks so much for coming, man. I, if you guys don't know him, guys, he has so much awesome content in the WCN. He's an entrepreneur, economist. Like, I, I lose track of how many things Max is doing in this space at any given time. So, you guys, make sure you got to follow him. I have links to everybody here, guys, on the show notes below. So, make sure you guys follow everybody again max uh, thanks for coming man despite all of the crazy amazing opsec you got going on there we still got him. uh so then we got finally guys last but not least you guys all know him the man with the greatest last name in the space mr dan held co-founder of interchange hq and host of hodl with heddle podcast dan how you doing doing well thanks for having me and uh great to hang out with you guys at bitcoin 2019 in my home city of san francisco yeah, that was awesome. I really had a great time. We got to see you, Dan. I got to hang out, got to talk. Uh, I had a great time. Fantastic time. I did a little bit of a recap on, I think, the last episode or the episode before that. And yeah, I'm just really looking forward to 2020. Totally, totally. It was, it was really refreshing to see a lot of people working on actual problems and providing solutions to those problems. And Instead uh, of the opposite. <laughs> yeah, instead of people showing you their abstract, you know, shiny idea, you know, a lot of these were very tangible, very real. And I think that was a lot more fun. It was probably one of the most fun, fun conferences I've been to in 2019. Absolutely. I mean, there was no bananas on the blockchain there, guys. It was nothing but <laughs> awesome stuff. We're talking about, you know, playing, uh, uh, using lightning QR codes to play video games. So you can actually use your lightning wall to play video games. It was, it was a, it was a treat. It was a great show. And of course, uh, Snowden, uh, even got, uh, they even got Snowden there for a great talk. And it was, uh, I, I man brought tears to my eyes, of course, when I found out, uh, that it, that it was Bitcoin that was used to buy those servers, uh, to hold those files for the journalists. So that was epic. So, uh, if you guys haven't seen that, make sure you check that out. I think that's on the Bitcoin 2019 YouTube channel. All right, so let's get into it, guys. Uh, we have an amazing panel again, and we have some topics to go through. So let's go through the first one, the biggest one of the week, the one that everybody's talking about, of course, uh, is the Libra hearings. Um, it seemed they seem to go pretty well for Bitcoin, not so much for Facebook. We had the day one there of the United States Senate Banking Committee. Then we had the day two, I think, of the House Financial Services Committee. Uh, you know, Bitcoin uh, being discussed by by everybody this week. It seems we got the, for the first time the the President of the United States has tweeted about Bitcoin. Uh, we have Congress, Secretary of Treasury. Fed chairman, ECB president. I mean, pretty much you you name it. And, uh, you know, people have been talking about it. So, Dan, you know, let's go with you first. Like, I got to ask, is, is Bitcoin like going mainstream politically? Yeah, this was extremely exciting. I mean, back when I got into Bitcoin in 2012, the idea that the president, the um, Treasury secretary and the uh, Fed chairman would all talk about Bitcoin in one week would be mind blowing. So this is super cool. I think Libra as I, as I kind of predicted on HODL with HEDL, Libra was going to elevate the topic of cryptocurrencies and ultimately Bitcoin. And so I think we're definitely seeing that permeate the consciousness of the world, especially with the leaders of the United States, uh, especially the leaders of the financial system of the, of the United States. And so that's now starting to, to you know, kind of etch away at their, their mindset around money and digital money. And uh, what I'm super excited about is that, you know, once people you know, if Libra just for a moment makes people question the nature of the reality, if it makes them question the nature of their state's money, then that plants the seed. People must first first think about why there's a problem with my government's money before they find Bitcoin. So I see this as the first stage, the stage of awareness that in the conversion funnel for someone to convert to Bitcoin. So this, I think this broadly expands the number of people on the top of the funnel, the awareness stage. Absolutely. You know, bringing more discussion. Uh, several senators have said it. Several people on CNBC have said it already. They're like, I didn't quite get Bitcoin fully until I saw what Libra was. And, you know, then it starts then it starts popping. So we've had several of these testimonies already. Uh, pretty interesting stuff. Matt, let me uh, um, Matthew uh, Odell here. Let me ask you, man, uh, is the um, you know, it seems that the, f the focus was was on the 
was on trust, right? So there was a whole lot of focus around trust and it seemed like um, there wasn't a whole lot of trust in Facebook. What, what are your takeaways from, from the hearings? I mean, uh, do people are, uh, is Facebook ever gonna even be able to launch Libra? Nobody trusts Facebook. No one, that, like in America, there's so much hatred towards Facebook, um, even before all this happened, uh, before they tried to launch Libra. So, I mean, I think a lot of us have been saying this whole time that it was very unlikely they launched, but if they do launch, it'll be because they, they completely bend the knee and they completely comply with all these regulations. And that's exactly why it's not competing with Bitcoin in the first place. And of course, we we you know we, we predicted this. Of course, people in Bitcoin. I mean, if if there, we predicted if there was ever going to be something that was actually going to be state allowed, right, allowed by the state, they would have to bend the knee. They would have to adhere to a regulators. Um, follow up question, real quick, Matt. Um, do you think that um, uh, do you think that Libra will actually be able to launch? Though, I mean, yeah, you didn't quite give you didn't quite give me that. What, mean, do, what do you think about that? So before the hearing, I said twenty percent. So I, I'd probably stay around twenty percent. It seems like I like it actually. In general, they seemed way more um, like receptive to the whole idea than I expected. And they seemed way more receptive to Bitcoin than I expected. So like I'm actually I'm still in shock from everything that's gone on in terms of Bitcoin, uh, in terms of their comments about Bitcoin. Um, I, I like Patrick McHenry, like his his uh, statements were crazy. And his interview afterwards uh, before where he said, you know, uh, I, I don't think we could kill Bitcoin even if we wanted to, unless we were like really aggressive about it, more aggressive than China's been. So so comments like that, I mean, that's unheard of for us. Like we've it's a whole new it's we're in a whole new uh, like ball game right now. Yeah, absolutely. I absolutely agree. I think we're in a whole new phase. Uh, this is def definitely Libra has sort of ushered in this this new phase of awareness uh, around Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. It seems uh, so. Max, uh, let me ask. I mean, we have all of this crazy talk, like like uh, Matt just mentioned. You know, Bitcoin was mentioned as an unstoppable force by Patrick McHenry. We got you know the word shitcoin being mentioned by Congressman Ward Davidson, and actually entered into the congressional hearing. So, uh, you know, uh, let, me, let me. What do you think about the conversation so far, Max? Like, is is Bitcoin really going mainstream with these uh, geopolitics? Well, uh, B Bitcoin doesn't really care, right? And anything is good for Bitcoin. Uh, so in, in that sense, I'm pretty, pretty chill, uh, you know? And, and furthermore, I mean, with Bitcoin, we really have this awesome thing that we don't have to care what the politicians say. Right? If, you're, if you're a Facebook stockholder, you were watching that hearing very, very closely, right? Because you really wanted to know how like, the lawmaker will give you permission and, and uh, what he will forbid you to do. And as a Facebook stakeholder, you really have to be careful here because you are a corporation and the corporation is a creature of the state, right? It's individuals getting together and that collective becoming legal identity based, based on well, government dictate. Uh, and therefore, if you do not comply with the government, it will take away your legal existence, right? And, and this corporation then will be sued into, well, non-existence. And thus Facebook has to comply because if they do not comply, they are literally dissolved into nothingness. Uh, and that is the beauty of Bitcoin. Bitcoin is not a corporation. Bitcoin is not a creature of the state. Bitcoin is the antithesis to the state. Bitcoin is designed to do one thing and one thing only, and that is to break the state. That is to have censorship-resistant money. That is to have uh, permissionless money that anyone can use. And well, with the ability to defend oneself and his private property. And this ability to become invulnerable to coercion is the antithesis to the state, which is based on coercion. So it's beautiful that we Bitcoiners really don't have to give a shit about what the politicians say. We just keep building and make these tools better so that sovereign individuals, not corporations, can use this Libra sound money that they so much need to defend themselves. Yeah, it's really interesting because I mean, recently we just had in Texas they had to actually go to the state to ask to, if children could buy lemonade or sell lemonade, right? So that was a story. And then we have now the U.S. Tre U.S. Treasury, uh, Treasury Secretary saying that the U.S. will run out of money by September. And then all this all of this focus was on money laundering in the Facebook uh, uh, hearings. And even though the, the even though the dollar is the most <laughs> used currency, the most laundered currency on the planet. So uh, uh, Max, like um, you know. It, how long do you think until they, they, they start realizing this? I mean, is because obviously Libra is helping this, but I mean, do you foresee um, the um, central, for example, do you foresee central banks trying to compete with, with fiat and issuing fiat after um, the, the, the inevitable government debt blows up? Well, it's going to take two weeks, of course, <laughs> as everything does. Uh, well, yes. no, but, I mean, it's really difficult to say, though. Uh, I would say that uh, Facebook is the biggest competition to banks. 
right? Banks are creatures of the state as well, right? They are corporations, at least the current form as we have them today, right? Not banking in general. Though, th then therefore, this means now we have two corporations uh, vying to be the best government mandated and government permissioned money. Uh, and now that is the question. Who is better at providing a valid service to the customers, right? Is it a old hundred year old uh, bank that is rigid with <laughs> IT infrastructure of the 1970s? Or is it going to be Facebook that bombards you with a tailor marketed uh, adrenaline uh, pumping ads and, and uh, candy crush nonsense? I'm pretty sure that Facebook can provide a better service uh, in the realm of permissioned money. Now, I don't care about permission money, right? That's why I'm interested in Bitcoin. And they both don't compete against Bitcoin. Uh, but Facebook competes against central or banks in general. And that will be very, very interesting to see. Absolutely. Uh, you know, speaking of this, let me ask you, Dan, um, we're on this real quick topic of uh, the central banks kind of printing their own currency to compete with fiat. Do you, do you think that the that the central banks will be able to come in and save the dollar? Is it like this three prong war now that Andreas described as uh, corporations like Facebook versus central banks now versus uh, Bitcoin and crypto? Uh, great question. Um, Libra is collateralized with U.S. government debt, so I don't really see how that's any different than fiat. Uh, so it's somewhat the same thing. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, we're talking about fully decentralized, full, like as decentralized as possible on the spectrum currency that has, is the longest running, most liquid, most secure, largest network effect that versus existing faith in the financial system and those fiat monies. Um, you know, I think the best, <laughs> a lot of people have brought this up and Samson Mao and I were on a panel about how to kill Bitcoin. I'm not sure if this came up on the panel, but if banks went, if central banks went back to the gold standard, that might delay Bitcoin from succeeding for, for decades. Now, it won't stop it, but it might delay it. And a lot of them still have gold on their, on their balance sheet. So that's, a, I think, a legitimate concern. Now, we would still have to trust that the gold is there. We'd still have to trust that, that they're not going to do some tricky math with it. Um, so I, I think the game is already in Bitcoin's favor. It's just more of the duration it might take for Bitcoin to hit hyper-Bitcoinization. Will it take a decade or will it take 30 years? Um, I think the only moves they have left is to, to delay it, not to stop it. The uh, perseverance for people to store their value into something that can't be seized by more powerful adversaries is irresistible. And more and more wealthy individuals, more and more governments, more and more companies will continue to do that over time. And I just see it, see it as this kind of unstoppable snowball unstoppable snowball people it's about to cause an avalanche uh matt uh go ahead you had something to say oh no i just i was cheersing unstoppable snowball I, I yeah really yeah i like that well let me, let me ask you matt um you know uh, because there, there, there was all this talk on the hearings about banking the unbanked of facebook i mean because of course crypto has has had that for a long time but but let me ask you matt like can libra really bank the unbanked no i mean it's mostly bullshit. i mean the the reason the current platforms can't bank the people that don't have banks yet is because of all the KYC AML regulation. Like that's the friction um, that stops it from happening. Like what people don't realize is like PayPal doesn't want to block your payments. Like PayPal would be happy to send all payments for everybody without any blocks whatsoever. They have to do it by law. They're forced to. Absolutely. So it just doesn't really seem, uh, you know, like you say, it seems to be mostly BS. Uh, if they're going to come in here, they would have to go through the same regulations as this traditional banking system. And even, of course, they've said like a million times in the, in the hearings, they're like, we promise we we will not launch unless we have you know, all regulations taken care of, unless everybody is approved. They just kept going. They kept hitting that uh, right. And they kept saying that over and over and over again. So, I mean, it just, it just keeps, and every time they said it, just all the thing that screamed to me was just traditional financial system. This is, we already have this. I'm not sure how they're going to bank the unbanked. Will they make some first world people rich? Yeah, uh, <laughs> probably, but uh, not so much banking uh, the unbanked. Uh, Max, what are your final thoughts on this, uh, on, on Libra and and then banking the unbanked? I mean, if anybody's going to do it, it seems that Bitcoin is is, is the most uh, ready to go. And, and here's another thing real quick, Max, before you answer, like, you know, all of these, uh, a lot of these third world countries have already have um, uh, you know, digital banking in some form, right? With the cell phone and things like that, uh, whether it's minutes or, or whatever, but it, they're already ready. So um, Bitcoin's already ready. So it seems that they would just switch over to Bitcoin rather than use Libra, right? Well, I mean, it really depends on the on how exactly this Facebook coin or shitcoin will, will play out. 
But in general, right, Facebook has a bunch of users. And if they really get them onboarded, then this would be a huge network effect. And assuming that this would happen, this would mean that the Libra coin is a pretty good uh, or a pretty liquid medium of exchange. Right? Uh, so in this sense, it might be a rather good money. Well, that's a huge assumption if they get everyone onboarded because uh, I don't know too many people who are left on Facebook. <laughs> and then, then also, like, it, it's, it's much more than just the network effect uh, to make a good money. Right? The US dollar has a huge network effect. Still, it's the biggest shitcoin of them all. So it, I would say that these other attributes that make a good money, like uh, the defense of private property and the permissionless use of your own goods, uh, is, is much, much, much more vitally important than anything that Facebook could offer. Uh, but I mean, that's the same argument that, that we've, we've been trying to make here with Bitcoin versus the shitcoins uh, that, that focus on all this other nonsense. Uh, and we still saw huge bubbles in the shitcoins. Uh, so will we see a bubble where the Libra shitcoin is pumping to the moon? Well, probably. I don't know. But I mean, we've seen a 100-year-long fiat pump. Uh, so the shitcoins will be pumping. They will be pumping. <laughs> it's just kind of funny, though, to watch them all go, you know, it's down in Bitcoin value. But like you said, they're going to go up in, in dollar value uh, uh, as, as the Bitcoin dollar value goes up against Bitcoin. Because, of course, uh, just the valuation of, of, of this, this horrible, horrible currency that has just been devalued to death when it goes up against Bitcoin. Really, like I try to tell people, it's, it's like these, uh, you know, Native American beads going up against a solid gold brick. I just don't see, you know, uh, how, how there's any other outcome except Bitcoin just sucking in and eating all that value. So uh, great points, guys. I think we can move on to the last, uh, to the second subject. If anybody has anything else to say on this one no nope. all right cool let's go on to the second one before we do that guys uh if you are new to the channel make sure to hit the subscribe button uh if you guys are liking this show uh please make sure to uh, hit that uh, thumbs up button we really appreciate it that helps us get into uh, more people's streams more people's feeds and if you guys really uh, enjoy this type of content we really appreciate uh, if you guys could donate uh thanks so much to uvas for the uh, super chat really appreciate that guys uh let's go on to the second subject of the day guys here we go this one's pretty interesting too uh so we got um you know bitcoin is essentially becoming bigger and bigger uh, on the world stage so it's seems uh, only natural that now that's actually being used to thwart like geopolitical sanctions, uh, you know, from coming from mostly from the US, of course. So we were seeing this now Bitcoin actually being used to thwart sanctions in Zimbabwe and Cuba, and possibly other places. So uh, let's go with let's go let's reverse it this time. Let's go to Max first. Uh, Max, uh, what, what are your thoughts on this? Because we have uh, Zimbabwe, they have banned the US dollar from being used. Uh, so now local local Bitcoin demand is just skyrocketing again. Uh, we're talking like, you know, 10s and 10s and 10s of 1000s of dollars premium on Bitcoin there. And then now Cuba reportedly evaluating crypto in the wake of sanctions. So uh, let me ask you, Max, like, is, is, is crypto and Bitcoin going to make these sanctions useless? Yes, pretty much, right? What are sanctions? They, they are a form of uh, binary aggression, uh, meaning that a state, uh, or sorry, a triangular aggression, meaning that a state, a tyrant, a slave master, uh, tells two other individuals what they are supposed to do and what they're not supposed to do. Uh, and meaning here that the, both the entrepreneur and the customer would like to engage in this mutual beneficial trade, right? Because they, they would both agree to this voluntarily. Uh, however, because there is the slave master uh, dictating that no, the entrepreneur is not allowed uh, to provide the service to the slave, uh, then, well, this means that only the master wins and both of the slaves lose. Uh, this is not mutual beneficial. This is, this is political. This is not economical. This is aggressive. Uh, and, and not peaceful, right? Uh, then, of course, the question is, well, what do we do against that? And the answer is defense by individuals. And we use tools at our disposal to defend ourselves. Uh, and this could be a 3D printed gun, or this could be your cold card uh, hardware wallet, right? Uh, and what, whatever you use for your individual defense, the better these tools are, uh, the more higher your success is to become invulnerable to coercion, right? to stop this aggression from happening. Uh, and to reclaim your private property uh, as, as an individual, right? And Bitcoin is exactly that. It is an unbelievably powerful weapon of self-defense that can be used precisely to move value across time and space uh, by simply hodling your private keys uh, and eventually making that transaction to whomever you so desire. This is your money and nobody's going to take this. Uh, so yes, Bitcoin breaks these sanctions at a very fundamental level because it provides tools of self-defense to these individuals. And that is utmost powerful. 
Absolutely. So, so uh, you know, this this big one it seems to be, and even um, recognized by Andreas recently, right? As as the unstoppable money, right? It's this unstoppable money that 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 was that allowed things like Ethereum to even exist. You know, to even to, <laughs> I think in Andreas's recent talks, he's like, you know, without Bitcoin, Ethereum couldn't have the party. They couldn't ha they couldn't be all the unicorn and and you know, jumping lovely people that they could be without this unstoppable money uh, powering everything. So uh, let's, let's 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 go to you, Matt. Uh, you know, we have you know. Cuba has had this long-standing economic war with with the United States for a long time, but uh, you know the same question too. Like, what do you think? Do you think that the that these sanctions are are going to be a thing of the past in, in a few years because of crypto? Well, I mean, I wouldn't say like thing of the past. I mean, they have other means of enforcing these types of things, um, but it, it does definitely make enforcement much more difficult. Uh, and you know, there's nothing we can do about that by design. So, like there the morality of whether or not you think the sanctions are just or whether you you know they think you think they aren't that doesn't really matter because uh in with with with, with bitcoin like no one no one can stop them so so it's irrelevant so we don't even just have to pay attention to them then we could just turn off cnn that's what you're saying okay <laughs> good stuff good stuff matt or uh, dan uh what, what, are your, what are your thoughts on that uh, what are your thoughts on, on these uh the sustainability uh, of these sanctions uh you know that like zimbabwe against uh even china against all this stuff what is their sustainability when bitcoin exists yeah so i think the objective right now for bitcoin hodlers would be to convert as many people as we can into holding some some amount of bitcoin because now they have skin in the game and it increases the surface area for attack so if they, a certain country wants to ban Bitcoin and 25% of their population has Bitcoin, well, now you've instantly destroyed your credibility as a governing body over this 25% of your population because you're about to destroy some of their money. And they're not going to be very happy about that uh, for good reason, because the state has no right over that if people have, you know, yeah, I'm not going to get into the tax issues. People should pay their taxes. I'm not advocating that people don't, but to each their own. Um, I do have a I do have accounting software, so people should pay it if they like. But I'm libertarian, so you know, want to want to call it caveat that. Um, but yeah, uh, you know, I think it's ultimately sort of a uh, it's a it's a confidence game that they can't win. If the Fed flinches, which it was incredible to see Jerome Powell say that Bitcoin is a speculative store of value. I mean, that blew my mind that the Fed gets it. And then when I was at the uh, value of Bitcoin conference in Munich, one of the central bankers out there whispered to us and he said, my, my religion is bigger than yours. And so they're starting to get it. Like they really, really get it. Um, but if they flinch and they recognize that they're scared of Bitcoin, which none of them have really said that, if they flinch and say they're scared of Bitcoin, then they've lost the confidence game, which means that by showing that you're afraid, you've lost the confidence of everyone looking at you. So I think central banks can't afford to really signal that they're afraid of Bitcoin until it's too late. And then they'll signal that they're afraid of it, which will exacerbate the problem and have more capital flows into Bitcoin. Yep. Uh, and that's exactly, I think, what we've been predicting for a while. It's it's pretty crazy to watch all this stuff play out. I think, again, everybody's mind is still blown at the amount of, um, you know, just activity that Bitcoin, the amount of uh, recognition that Bitcoin has got this week from all of these players that we thought would be years away, at least, you know, from talking about it. So that is just great to see. Uh, and of course, uh, you know, on the tax issue, as Tone Vezao says, of course, uh, you know, only pay the least amount of taxes that you can legally get away with. That's, I think that's about the best way that we can really describe it. You know, and it's interesting what you say about Trump, you know, because, you know, Trump's coming out, of course, and saying that um, the, the, the Bitcoin and crypto is not good. But uh, you see, uh, millions of people own Bitcoin and crypto. And, you know, Trace Mayer was was talking about this on a recent podcast. He's like, he's like, they were talking. You're talking about how how is the president supposed to defend, um, you know, something that's competitive to the U.S. dollar? But here's the thing, guys, and this is I think really worth repeating. Repeating. We don't have a U.S. dollar right now. We have a federal note from the Federal Reserve, right? It's not. It hasn't been the U.S. dollar in decades. Uh, you know, and, and these people uh, and, and sound money is in the Constitution. So when we when we're talking about defending, we don't defend a, a political leader, right? We defend the Constitution and the Constitution. In the Constitution, there's sound money. The U.S. dollar is worth a certain amount of silver, a specific, very specific amount of, of silver. And so, you know, I think that. It, uh, when, when um, sound money, this is why we talk about sound money being important because the U.S. dollar was sound money. It was important, and it did allow the United States to become huge. And uh, you know, now of course, as as the dollar is is not even the real dollar anymore, we see what happens with that. Nine, over ninety percent, uh, is it gets devalued. 
uh, over the past few decades. So it's just it's just kind of crazy to see that people how, mu how much of people have forgotten uh, about what sound money is, about what the U.S. dollar is. And uh, if you really want to, you know, um, defend sound money and and put sound money into the back into the Constitution, I think Bitcoin is going to be uh, the best way to do it. And if Trump starts, you know, dissing Bitcoin and things like that, I don't see how he's going to be able to stay in office. I don't see how any president is going to be able to stay in office and get the votes of the people when they when when the millennials are are, are now voting and the millennials are now on on the grand stage and they see that their currency is being devalued and Bitcoin is going up, you know, how, how are you? We, we now have the votes and we now have the money, right? So I don't see how a president is going to actually be able to stay in office too long uh, when they are uh, not getting on board uh, the Bitcoin and crypto bandwagon. So it'd be interesting to see uh, great comments from everybody. I think we can move on to the final topic unless everybody has, has anything else to say on this one? You know, to, to quote the Go ahead, Max. Uh, Mary Rothbard, the dollar is a measurement of weight. God damn it. A measurement of weight, exactly. And uh, I, I tell you, um, nothing has more, and nothing has much more weight than Bitcoin. Like if you look at the transactions, guys, uh, recently, uh, you know, go to mempool.space, yeah, you'll see there's there is thousands of transactions that gets put, you know, in a block. Uh, this is this is not <laughs> this is not Bcash. It's not BSV trying to put you know a couple of transactions in two gigabyte blocks uh, no this is thousands of transactions now ten, and soon tens of thousands and then soon hundreds of thousands of transactions will be uh you know compiled together uh, in a single block so interesting to see uh bitcoin continue to scale every single block now i'm getting off on a tangent but every single block now guys is over one megabyte i mean bitcoin is scaling we have lightning network it is absolutely absolutely amazing so speaking of lightning network let's go on to the final topic here we got a uh, bitstamp guys launching their very own Lightning node. Now, this is, I think, a huge milestone. I think this is really important. Uh, so, uh, Matt, uh, let's let's start with you first. Um, what what are, what are your thoughts on this? Because uh, before you do, actually, before you do it, let me just read a couple of. Uh, let me just read a tweet with what Bitstamp said. They said that we believe the Lightning Network has the potential to unlock a whole new level of utility for Bitcoin. We've set up our own Lightning Network node to help grow the network and encourage other companies to get on board. And their blog post says it enables Bitcoin to handle millions of transactions per second with almost zero fees. Uh, this creates the possibilities beyond what's possible with traditional money. So uh, let me ask you, Matt, is 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 this a sign of the times? Is is Lightning Network finally getting on board with with the ecosystem? Is more and more people, uh, more and more companies, uh, creating Lightning nodes? And how long until every exchange runs their own Lightning node? Well, I mean, first of all, I think it's just really good to see. It's obviously a, a, a research project for them, mostly right now. Um, I, uh, you know, it's no small secret that exchanges are a major source of transaction volume on Bitcoin. Uh, so they're natural. They're naturally suited uh, to to be a part of the lightning ecosystem as well. Um, the question really becomes, there's definitely some advantages there to onboarding people, um, you know, for the stacking sats meme, for instance, right? Like if you're actually stacking sats, like low, really low amounts of Bitcoin, like you need a, a way to transfer that off exchange without transaction fees eating away at that. So there, there is, there's some interesting things that could happen here where they can, they can basically launch wallets for people um, and give them immediate inbound capacity and also send them Bitcoin. Um, uh, and, and, and that could be an additional revenue service for them. Now, the other question is, you know, right now these wallets are, are mostly hot wallets. Uh, I think they're, they're all hot wallets. Uh, so, so there's a security implications here, and it should be interesting to see how these exchanges try and, you know, balance the pros and cons and, and how they want to roll this thing out. Yeah, very interesting. Uh, so and if, for the people who are confused, like of why, for example, an exchange would do this, uh, the more the reason it's basically to help out the whole uh, actual lightning network as a whole because essentially the more nodes the more open payment channels you know the more liquidity that there is in the network which means the more uh, allow uh, the more transactions that can actually happen right the more economic activity can take place so um i think this is really great uh, to, to kind of take the, this this big initiative uh, as an exchange as big as bitstamp to be able to sort of say hey guys this is why we're doing this this is why we, we believe it and it's really i think great to see uh, as as an example for more and more exchanges because like you say Matt, i mean the vast majority of transaction activity on Bitcoin probably right now is is from uh, exchanges, right? So uh, let's go with uh, Dan next. Uh, Dan, what what do you think about this? How how did this hit you? Because you know uh, I see I just see more and more Bitcoin services doing this exact same thing, opening up Lightning nodes and putting it on their site so people can access liquidity. What what do you think? Yeah, I think this is phenomenal that Bitstamp uh, went out there and put you know put their kind of name behind Lightning and, and that they want to try it out and, and work with it. I think the biggest opportunity for Lightning, and I've been saying this for over the last year, 
is between exchanges. So I think the real value we're going to see here is when uh, an ex another exchange goes, yeah, we'll open up a Lightning channel with Bitstamp. That's huge because a, a majority of on-chain volume is between exchanges. So you've got tons. I'm, actually, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if that's true. Uh, a large portion of on-chain volume is between exchanges. So to see that a lot of that volume move to Lightning channels would make a ton of sense. Um, so in, in that as well, you know, those are two mature entities that can really understand the nuances of using kind of an earlier stage uh, tool like Lightning, which right now Lightning is a little bit hard for mainstream consumers to use. But between two corporations, as of this moment, I think would be very high ROI uh, with knowledgeable people and knowing, knowing the, you know, they would be able to go past the uh, user experience limitations that a normal consumer might have with it today. I think these user experience problems can be solved in time. I'm not saying that it won't ever be, but currently I think it's a little tricky for some people to use Lightning, and that's not a bad thing. It's a new technology. Of course, every new technology has user experience hurdles. Yeah. Uh, okay. Let's go with Max next. Um, Max, what do you what do you think about that? Because you know, I do think I see Lightning Network uh, or Lightning Law. It's getting easier and easier to use. Um, um, do do you see do you see this as well, Max? What what are your thoughts? Well, yeah, we will build the tool to make it easier. Uh, I mean, it's it's pretty doable now. Like anyone who invests a little bit of his time and attention will figure it out. Uh, but yeah, pl plug and play stuff. We'll get there. We'll get there. That'll come. Uh, and in regards to exchanges, just using Lightning. Yes, that is fantastic, and I think on many different levels. Uh, first would be something uh, uh, like channel uh, capacity services, uh, similar to what BitRefill is doing, and they, they are, that's a fantastic service. Uh, so that actually is a huge exchange business. For example, uh, pay 50, uh, 50 shitcoins worth, uh, get uh, 100 shitcoins worth in Bitcoin opening in the channel, and 50% of that, exactly half, pushed to your site, so that you have your 50 shitcoins worth of Bitcoin. Uh, but then you can now uh, send and receive with Lightning Network, right? Uh, these turbo channels. And that makes very a lot of much sense uh, for any exchange to have, especially like ATMs. Uh, then though also, and that is something that Voltoro has been spearheading and is now for almost over a year on mainnet uh, or testnet with this, and that is to have a order book uh, with market makers uh, that have the funds uh, in their hot wallets, but then the market taker uh, can uh, see whatever order uh, is, is available uh, and then snipe this order out of the order book uh, by paying that lightning invoice and directly and immediately uh, settling that payment uh, without ever uh, putting these sats into a custodial wallet. Uh, and just out of the user experience here of having these instant lightning payments, uh, that is fantastic. And I mean, uh, you can buy gold over lightning uh, already today, that is fantastic. Uh, and I would say then the third uh, option would be to have huge channels between uh, these different exchanges, uh, so to help out with the uh, routing of the of the network. Uh, and I do think that that is absolutely a valid service, and for sure that will come. However, I would say for inter-exchange transfers, uh, side chains might make more sense, uh, out of mainly the two reasons that uh, the fees in Lightning Network uh, are based on the uh, volume of capital uh, being transferred while the fee on a chain itself, either the Bitcoin time chain or a side chain, uh, where we pay for the data size and not the volume of uh, capital being transferred. Uh, and so for large uh, inter-exchange transfers, Liquid is pretty damn good, especially with confidential transactions and all the other magic that they have. That might be a, a bit more faster with, with adoption and uh, exchanges. We already see that. Many, many exchanges are collaborating with Liquid. Uh, so I would say scaling on all fronts. Uh, this is fantastic. Uh, we will build this technology more and more. I mean, we try to tell people we're going to do it all. We're going to do side chains. We're going to do lightning. <laughs> we're going to do everything that we can think of. Uh, you know, I mean, remember, because Bitcoin is truly decentralized. So that means that there is people thinking up stuff and, and building stuff that you have no idea about. And then all of a sudden they release a product and you're like, wow. You know, it's it, now it's a game changer. It moves the entire space forward. So, uh, yeah, it's a really great uh, distinction. People need to. I think that's really important to repeat is that um, that really the distinction between these two scaling mechanisms, like like you say, the, the side chain and of course the most prominent one, Liquid, uh, is really great for this intersettlement. You know, this uh, between exchanges, uh, inter, you know, actually between big big huge settlements between exchanges and big big players like that. But for the consumer side, you know, for being able to just maybe transfer your balance right out of the exchange, that uh, uh, we're we're going to scale with lightning and uh as you say uh max is scaling on both scaling on all fronts so i think um as these two technologies mature i mean it's only it's only inevitable it's only inevitable guys it's as inevitable as 
um, cable modem was for the internet, right? Like we were, we knew that we were never going to just be loading a web page, you know, <laughs> in like thirds forever, right? We eventually we're going to uh, get something more. But of course, as as many people have pointed out already in the technology, every time we take a network to capacity, some bright engineer gets an idea and just brings the whole thing down, right? And then we need to scale again. We came up with email, then we needed attachments, then we needed video, then we needed HD and on and on and it goes. So uh, I, I absolutely see uh, that that moving forward with Bitcoin as well. Uh, again, guys, history doesn't really repeat, but it certainly rhymes, that is for sure. So uh, any, uh, let's see if we have any other uh, topics on that. Actually, um, yeah, uh, let's go to Matt. Do you have any other final th topic uh, thoughts on this topic? Um, no, I, I, on this topic, I tend to agree. Uh, you know, liquid seems well suited for this. Uh, you know, one of the issues with liquid is, uh, basically like on the scale of, on, on the trade-offs, they, they go with scalability and cost, uh, you know, instead of censorship resistance, that is, is, is a fine trade-off when it's just exchanges going back and forth with each other because, uh, yeah, because they're known entities, they know each other, they'll do a lot of business together and, and, and they can do that. Trade-offs, guys. It's very, very, very important. That's what people seem to not realize that every single every single action is going to have trade-offs, pluses and minuses. Uh, Max, uh, I think we can, uh, before we close it, I would like to maybe just hear um, a few final thoughts from you for, about Wasabi because you have been sort of involved really with with creating with Wasabi, with creating amazing tutorials uh, over there on WCN for people to learn and how to use this uh, so service. Maybe we can just switch slightly to that. Uh, what, what are you seeing with the latest in things like Whirlpool, uh, you know, from Samurai Wallet, this mixing service, and then also with, with Wasabi. Oh, yeah, dude, we need so much more education. It is really insane. I mean, I've been falling down this this uh, coin join and, and Wasabi uh, rabbit hole for like a year now. And wow, I know nothing. Like, it's insane how complex privacy in Bitcoin is and the nuances that we have to take care of here. Uh, and we really have to make sure to not just build tools that really guide users to not make critical mistakes, but on the second hand, to educate the peers uh, so that they know when they messed up and how they can prevent it. Uh, this is really, really difficult. Uh, and I would say we, we are just so far not there yet. There is so much work to do. Oh my, it's, it's insane. It really is insane. Um, it, this will take a long, long time before we will figure out how to do this securely uh, and, and really with, without users messing up too much. Uh, but the cool thing is that already today, if you know what you're doing, we have the tools available to have pretty damn good privacy in Bitcoin. Uh, I mean, uh, Zero Link is just a brilliant protocol. And the two implementations we have so far, I mean, the first one being Wasabi uh, with, with that coin join, and then now Samurai, now with their Whirlpool, uh, it's fantastic. Uh, the more, the better. Uh, we really need to make sure that different uh, projects work on this, different implementations uh, to fine tune and, and to experiment with different trade-offs uh, and with different uh, ways to structure these transactions. Uh, I, I hope that we will very soon see as many uh, coin join providers as we see VPN providers uh, and, and then to have this, this well, good selection of, of which trade-offs we want to make uh, because, well, really, we need privacy and we need more entrepreneurs providing these services uh, to, uh, to clients and to, to users. Uh, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to this. Uh, we need a lot of help. So please, anyone, <laughs> help us. <laughs> Yeah, uh, if guys, I mean, and that goes on all fronts. I mean, you know, we need we need better UX. We need designers. We need more content creators like Max uh, with more tutorials. And uh, shout out to uh, Benny P of the BTC Sessions because he has a great um, coin, um, Wasabi Wallet tutorial as well. And uh, Max, how long till we get some Whirlpool uh, tutorials? <laughs> Uh, I was waiting until we get the plug and play version with the Noddle. Um, it's it's already on the test version for the Noddle for for many months, uh, and and then you're trying to make this uh, this really work. Uh, hopefully soon, uh, two weeks, uh, th that will be available plug and play, uh, and and then I will do it because uh, I th I think just you know I I assume that everyone knows what the coordinator knows, uh, and when you're not running your own full node, then the coordinator knows quite a lot. Uh, and then for me, that, that just really doesn't, doesn't make too much sense. So you have to run a full node. Th that is rule number two, in, well, it's rule number three in Bitcoin privacy. The first rule is never reuse addresses. The second rule is never reuse addresses. And the third rule is run your own full node, right? And then without having your own full node, this, this all really doesn't make any sense. Uh, so we like this has to be done. Anything without your full node, uh, or with very good, uh, very secure network level privacy, with something, for example, uh, BIP one fifty eight uh, over Tor, uh, that would be acceptable. 
but still running your own full node, that, that really is a must. So, so I'm waiting for that with Samurai. Uh, but as soon as that is out in two weeks, uh, video is coming for sure. Always two weeks, guys. Always two weeks. And you know, like like Max said, this really requires all of us, right? Not just the big players, but I mean, really just everybody, ecosystem wide, um, uh, because we still have some exchanges that are reusing addresses. We still have some exchanges, guys, that are reusing addresses all the time. I think Binance is still doing it. It's ridiculous. So uh, this is really going to take everybody, and we really got to hound these people. Uh, we have amazing services like you know Bitcoin Optech that are trying to educate uh, businesses about the the privacy and, and best use cases for Bitcoin. But uh, it's really going to take us all. So uh, great comments, Max. Uh, Matt, final thoughts on on any of the uh, privacy topic? Yeah, I mean, yeah, privacy is hard, not just Bitcoin, just in general, privacy is hard. Um, you know, the, there was, I posted a tweet this week about um, a write-up that one of the Samurai guys did um, on a known issue with Wasabi. We've known, we, we, we've known that this was part of, of um, how Wasabi works, is, is where you have these um, well, first of all, the number one rule is like you should be remixing. And then the second rule is um, that that change at the end of your mix, that unmixed change is obviously still linked to you. And you have to be very careful with those outputs. So, it, you know, it's it really highlights that I think the Samurai guys did a good job of really highlighting where we have issues with the user when it's when it comes, it takes a lot of user interaction and nuance. Like the user needs to be aware of what they're doing and make proper decisions. And users aren't going to do that all the time, right? So you need to have like sane defaults and like UX that tries to guide them to through the proper practices. And and I you know I, I think uh, ideally like the best way to see this happen is to is to really give them like a like a full stack kind of experience where where they're where their hand is basically held. And I'm it's still, even in that situation, I'm not sure if like the average user would be able to uh, like navigate that effectively. Like all you have to do is do one, one error. Um, and, and, and then all those gains you've had are, are significantly reduced. I mean, I do not, you know, I've been a loud promoter of, of doing coin joins and everyone should still, uh, I mean, even if you, even if something, even if you fuck it up and, and there's, and, and it's, it's not as effective as you think it is. It's still way more effective than not using coin control, not doing mixing in the first place. And also mixing helps everybody. Like, you know, it, it, the more people that mix actually makes the, the Bitcoin network itself more fungible, more safe, more private. Uh, so just that's why we that's why people like Matt and myself, we just try to uh, all the time and just try to encourage people to use things like Wasabi, use things like Whirlpool. Uh, now Whirlpool just released uh, a, a newest version, which has some awesome features you guys got to check out. But uh, I, we realize that privacy is not going to be for everybody. We, we understand this, guys. We know that 80 percent is just going to say PayPal. You know, what do I do? But there 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 is. Uh, the necessary, uh, the necessity for a big base layer of, of folks to be able to take this, you know, the brunt of this um, responsibility on. And this is the case how it is usually for everything, right? The 20% protects the 80%. And so uh, the, the, we really want to encourage uh, develop, wallet developers to get this UX right, because we do want to make it as easy as possible for this. We know it's never going to be perfect, but uh, I think that with enough time that can goes by and, uh, you know, enough, enough UX, enough Really, just enough time, guys. Because remember, Bitcoin has never existed before, so we never actually had to worry about this type of problem before. We never had to worry about keys, right? We we have backups of our hard drives. We never had to worry about our hard. But now we have, we have money on our phones and our computers. It's a whole new paradigm, a whole new ball game. So we are going. But I believe that we will figure this out. I believe that we can make it easy enough to where if somebody is so inclined that they really want to pursue privacy, they will have that option. And that is what, that's what it's about, guys, is making that option available. We don't need it to be perfect. We don't, we don't need everybody to use it. We need it to be available. And that, I think, is a, really a, a big, big, big important factor that people like myself, like Matt and others, try to get out on Twitter, try to tell people to coin join everything that you guys do, coin join it all, and uh, that will absolutely make the network more safe, more fungible, and more private. So, uh, Dan, uh, let's go with you on the final, uh, final thoughts for the subject. Yeah, I mean, look, I'm uh, I'm a huge proponent of privacy. I'm uh, a huge libertarian. I really doubt consumers will take the necessary steps if it adds any little piece of friction. Um, a case in point is the Face app that a lot of people have downloaded. It, it makes you know it shows you what you're going to look like when you're old, and no one re reads the terms of service. And I think over a hundred million Americans downloaded it, or some some crazy amount. I might be making the number up, but I use a huge amount, a huge percentage of Americans. 
it will, real quick, if it's not if it's not somebody that downloaded it, then somebody took a picture of them anyway from a picture that they had of them in their phone and yeah. they used it. So look, I mean, I, I want consumers to care about their privacy, and a lot of people with the uproar with Facebook and other privacy, uh, you know, Facebook and some of the consumer credit scoring agencies that breaches there. People voice concerns around the privacy, but I see little to almost no action in terms of preserving their own privacy. So. I think these should be baked into tools as the default setting. So I think that's the way that we really, you know, build this future out where people can take a hold of their privacy is if we make that turned on by default. But if we require any amount of friction for people to to go do that, I, I just don't think they will from a consumer like consumer product perspective. Yeah, and that's that's the ultimate goal. It's just to continue to reduce friction and reduce friction and reduce friction until eventually it really is just a double click. And I think that we can make that possible because look what we did with the internet. Look at look, look how much look at the amount of complexity that we distilled down into what we call a web browser. Right? All you do is you type in gamespot.com and <laughs> that's it guys and you, there is so much happening literally layers and layers and layers and layers and protocols and protocols and protocols happening in order to make that happen in real time and so i think we can i think it's possible uh, it's just going to take some time uh, like you say dan and and we just really got to get it right when we got to get it right soon sooner than later so that uh, people can get accustomed to these uh, these habits as much as possible get accustomed to these uxs as much as possible get accustomed to uh, terms and, and concepts like mixing and so on. So uh, I think we can end it there, guys. Uh, great, great points. Uh, really appreciate everybody being on the show. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do our outro now. Uh, there was just uh, so much more that went on, but I wish we could talk about it, guys, but we only got an hour. So I uh, really, really thank everybody for being on the show today. Uh, thank everybody for so much for watching the show. We had a great time. I hope you guys learned something. Uh, Dan, tell us where can we find out more about you, sir? It's pretty easy. It's Dan Held on, on Twitter and danheld.com to read my blog. So those would be the two best spots to find me. And the podcast, guys, Hoddle with Heddle. It's technically a TV show. Oh, snap. That's right. I keep thinking it's a podcast. I'm, no, I'm, living, I'm living in the pleb land. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's, a, it's an actual show, guys. Uh, that's actually it's really great, guys. Make sure you check it out. I uh, really, really recommend it. There's so many good podcasts out there these days, Bitcoin podcasts. But Hoddle with Heddle, guys, make sure you check it out. Uh, then we got Mr. Matthew, of course. Where can we find out more about you, sir? Uh, Twitter is at Matt Underdash Odell. And... Uh, our podcast is tftc.io and uh, stay humble stack sets stay humble people stack sets follow matt odell on twitter you will be a happier person i guarantee it max where can we find out more about you sir uh, well that will be at hillebrand max on twitter uh, or at towards liberty.com uh, for the personal website where also the pgp keys and all the magic encryption stuff is uh, so so go there uh, for secure communication and of course on, on the github more and more uh, if, if you want to contribute please man, we really need your help so even if it's uh, documentation or, or education or whatever it is code review a uh, feature request bug reports all the magic uh, so so be active uh, stack stats for sure uh, but also keep on building even trolls. We need everybody, Max. We need we need them all, man. <laughs> we need them all. So make sure you follow Max's GitHub. Uh, there's lots of stuff. Of course, make sure you, uh, you guys follow World Crypto Network. Max has a lot of great uh, content there as well. So again, guys, thanks so much for joining. We really, really appreciate it. Hope to see you guys more. We're going to be bringing more and more shows back uh, this fall. Uh, we've been kind of just doing the Bitcoin news show here for, for a while now, but we're going to try to focus more and more uh, on the channel this fall. So I'm really looking forward to bringing the channel back to its with former glory days we'll see what happens guys i really appreciate everybody joining really appreciate all the donations guys thanks so much for the super chat hope you guys learned something until next time don't forget please always 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 keep talking bitcoin we'll see you guys later Bye bye <laughs>